Good afternoon. Shabbat Shalom. We're so glad you could be with us today and glad that you could study with us for this special, what may be the last of the signs of the times teaching for right at this moment. I wouldn't tell you that we won't be coming back to it uh, off and on, but uh, for right now, I feel like we've come to the time when we may want to bring this thing to a close for right now, and praise God, we're going to bring it to a close in victory. You ought to always be saying victory, victory. You want to know why? The Bible says that the Lord always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says that he always causes us to triumph in him. Amen. We're not, uh, we're not victims in this world, and you need to understand it, especially as you watch the things going on around you and recognize that there's two sides to the glory cloud. There always have been. So, Father, today we thank you that you're going to reveal to us who we are at this time. You're going to show us your will for us, for this time in which we live. Uh, people continually talk about them being uncertain times. But I want to say today I am certain of these times because I don't know exactly what's going to happen next, but I'm certain that my God's in control in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you're keeping us and protecting us. So thankful, Lord, that we have the 91st Psalm inside of us, that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are our fortress, Lord. We run to you, and we're safe. Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you for this study time that you've given us. And as we study, as we teach, we recognize that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And we remember the promise of the Word of God. You said that the Holy Spirit would teach us all things. He would bring to our remembrance the things that you've said, Jesus. That he would guide us into all truth and that he would show us things to come. And truly, right now, even though, as we've just said, we don't know every little minute detail of what's going to happen next, but we know that we know that we know that our God has us in the hollow of his hands. Hallelujah. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. We're so blessed to be your people. We're so glad that we're your very own children and you're our very own Abba. Hallelujah. Our very own Daddy. We give you praise and honor and glory today for what you're going to teach us by the Holy Spirit, what you're going to show us. Lord, I, I yield myself to you today that you would use my lips, that you would use my mind for your glory and honor today. Channel through me the things of the Spirit of God today, and we'll give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited about teaching this. I've been thinking about it. The Lord put it on my heart some time ago that as we've taught about the, the final seasons of the year, or actually, as we might say, as we've taught about the Moedim, God's appointed times, we've taught about those. We, it's just kind of natural we go right on in to uh, another part of that, and that is this very time in which we live. Right now, the right now, I don't know what you call right now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but I know this much. That in, in so far as the progress is, this is certainly right at the end of the end times. The Acharat Hayamim in Hebrew, the end of days, we're coming to the end of those days. When I say that, it doesn't mean the end of the earth because the world is never going to end. It's going to be rebuilt, it's going to be completely redone, but the world will not end. In fact, the scripture itself says world without end. Amen. Praise God, we believe that. But at, the, at this end of days, and, and another way to look at it is, it's the, the end of the 6,000th year since creation. And it's that period of time when uh, the lease that God gave to mankind for this earth and the dominion that he gave us in this earth is about to expire. And at the end of this 6,000 years, Jesus himself is going to come 
and rule and reign on this earth for the Shabbat millennium, the seventh millennium. He will be here and we will experience Shabbat and rest like we've never experienced it before. I believe we'll be in new bodies during this time, praise God. At least I believe I will be. I believe I'm going to be a part of the, of the ones that are taken out, caught away. We've talked about that, the catching away. I believe we're going to be taken out of this and our bodies are going to be new bodies, resurrection bodies. Those that are dead in Messiah will rise first and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now Jesus told us to watch. He said it's important during this time that you watch. In other words, you stay vigilant. He said it in uh, Matthew 25, 13, among other places. But he said, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. But at the same time, he did indicate to us that we would know something about the seasons. And I can sense the seasons, can you? You know, just the other day, they told us it was the first day of fall. And here in Grand Lake today, boy, you can tell it's, it's fall time. You can really tell that. Uh, the sun didn't change at all. Uh, for us here, it was warm on the first day of fall. But, uh, you know, we've had uh, previews of the coolness coming, and it was kind of crisp this morning again. And when we came out to come down here, it was kind of crisp. It's kind of cool in here today, praise God. But we know it because we've been watching the signs. We know these things are coming. We aren't, we aren't taken by surprise every year. When, when, when fall time comes, we know they're going to come, just like we know winter's going to come, but praise God, we know it'll be spring again before long, unless this is the year when the Lord says, this is it, I'm going to take you home. And I'm ready for that. I really am ready for that, praise God. But let me talk to you today about what we're doing here while we're watching, while we're keeping awake, while we're vigilant, why we're giving our strict attention to the fact that the Lord's coming back, and this is the reason we keep talking about it all the time, is so that we will understand the times in which we live, and so that we will understand it, not just according to what some guy on TV said, <laughs> or some guy on Facebook said, but we'll understand it because the Word of God says it. Amen? We will understand it because that's what the Word of God is teaching us, and we're going to let the Holy Spirit interpret His Word to us and show us the days that are to come. And one of the things that got this so that we could do this was the way the Lord has given us of His Spirit. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, by the way, if you have a Bible, mark it up. Take notes, read, go back, go over these. I can't go through every scripture as completely and, and uh, even to the, the full extent I'd like to go. I'd like to start earlier in the scripture and go later, but in order to get this teaching into a reasonable time frame, we're going to give you bits and pieces, but you can always go back and meditate. And when you meditate, do it the way the Bible teaches to do it. Do it with your mouth. Don't just do it with your with your thoughts, do it with your mouth, mutter it, say it out loud, let your ears hear what you're saying. But let's do it right now with this verse, and you can read along with me while I do this. Say, when the Spirit of truth comes, that's when the Holy Spirit came, and we talked about that as something which happened on the day of Shavuot, when the Spirit of God came into the congregation of God on this earth to stay it says, when he comes, he will not guide, he, he will, I'm sorry, he will, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. In other words, the Holy Spirit doesn't have a Holy Spirit agenda, he has the Father's agenda, and the Father's agenda and the Son's agenda are all the same. They're all one, they're echad, that's what the scripture says in Hebrew about one, echad, it's one of purpose, Amen one of, uh, of unity in, in such a way uh, that we can understand it. But it says, whatever he hears from the Father, the Holy Spirit hears from the Father, he will speak, and when he will declare to you 
the things that are to come. Now, I said just a minute ago, we don't know every detail about the things that are coming, but we can listen now, can't we? Because if he's speaking, it requires that we hear. So let's say, I will listen. I will be attentive. I will watch, but I also will be attentive to what the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And the last part that it says here, if we'd have read in uh, uh, John 14, would have seen that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, will teach us all things and bring to our remembrance what Jesus said. But in the 16th chapter here, it says he will speak whatever he hears, guiding us into all truth. And lastly, he will declare to you the things that are to come. In other words, I believe this is telling us very clearly God wants us to be aware of what's coming. God wants us to be aware of what's coming. You remember Jesus said this, these words at the beginning of John 14, don't let your heart be troubled. See, because there's going to be some troubling signs for those that don't listen to what the Bible says. He will declare to you the things that are to come so that you won't be troubled by them, so that you'll recognize that something is happening, something is changing. But remember what I said, we're not victims during this time. We're more than conquerors through Jesus who loves us and gave himself for us. We are victors during this time. More than conquerors means overcomers, more than overcomers. Or I always kid people and say it kind of means over-overcomers. People that overcome, and they overcome so much that they just keep overcoming, and they overcome themselves overcoming. Amen. They just keep getting better. Amen. I want to go back now to some of the prophecies that are the things that declare to us things that are to come. And I want to go first to the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 says, It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. You remember what we just read in John chapter 16, that when the Spirit comes, this is what will happen. Well, here he's describing this beforehand. He says, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, I want you to know right now that I believe in the gift of prophecy. I believe in prophesying. But I really believe that it doesn't have to be preceded with, Thus saith the Lord, even though we certainly want to give him credit for what he's saying. But at the same time, sometimes I believe we get to thinking on things so much that we get into religion on these things instead of what it really means. Your sons and your daughters shall speak forth from the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on and it says, Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Now, I believe this is all describing supernatural events, not just, you know, I had a dream last night about ice cream cones and, and uh, silly things. But no, I believe that these kind of dreams are dreams from the Lord. Joseph had dreams like this, you remember, uh, he was told to take the child, Jesus, into Egypt because there was someone seeking his life. So arise, that was a, that's the kind of dream we're talking about, dreams that give us uh, information from God. And your young men shall see visions. Now, a vision similar to a dream, but you have visions while you're awake. You have day visions, you have night visions. You have times when you're sleeping and you have times when you're wide awake. If you've ever seen a vision, you know that, you know, some of you may have had old long visions. I've had generally very short visions, but I've seen things. I've seen things. And when I see them, you know, I'm aware right away that these aren't natural. These are something that God's doing. And so I want you to understand this about the dreams and the visions. And I want you to go back to the fact that it says sons and daughters shall prophesy. Some people have uh, messed up gender in the day and age in which we live to where it means nothing, but some people in the days before have messed up gender too. And God says that it doesn't make any difference whether you're male or female, whether you're a Jew or Greek, whether you're bond or free. We're all the same in the ministry of the Lord, amen, in coming into his times 
in coming into the time of ministry that he puts into people. We'll prophesy, we'll speak forth. What does that actually mean? We're going to speak forth for the Lord. We're going to say what he's saying. I've, I've said this for a long, long time, that if you want to be a successful prayer, pray the word of God. Pray what God says. But if you really want to be successful, pray the word of God that God puts into your heart at a specific time rather than just going through and picking your own section. Let the Lord do it. Let him show you. Amen. I want to move ahead to what happened after this happened and what the Lord said would happen because of this when, when he put his spirit on all flesh. Amen. If you look in, uh, well, let's go to Joel 20, 2, 29 first. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I'll pour out my spirit. Just verifying what I just said. All of his servants are his servants. Amen. And uh, I, we, we're kind of given to understand that when we all get into the presence of the Lord, that this male and female thing is not going to be a, a major part of us anymore. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, it certainly is a, a part of our identity. And, uh, you know, we, we just need to understand that it, he looks at us all as one and he'll use us all as one. If you're a female today that has been taught that you don't have a place and you have to keep quiet all the time, uh, you know, I'd like to invite you to really study the word and see what it says. I believe that the scripture definitely talks against a female or a wife usurping authority over her husband. I believe that. But I want you to know that if you're a wise male, you will draw from the anointing that is in your wife. You will recognize that she hears from God too. It just, what it means is there shouldn't be this kind of uh, uh, ad adversarial relationship that so often happens between genders or between husbands and wives. But primarily when God's talking about this, He's talking about people, women and men, not becoming ostentatious on their own part and taking authority that God never gave to them. Amen? There's a whole lot of teaching. We could go on into that. I'm not going to do it today and probably get some of you all upset if I tried to do it too quickly. So we're not going to do that. But we are going to talk about what the Scripture says. Again, I said, now the Lord said, this is what's going to happen when the Holy Spirit comes on people the way it was spoken of in Joel. Yet, they're going to prophesy, they're going to dream dreams and see visions, but then he said there's going to be signs. You know, we talk about the signs of the last days, the signs of the times. Well, I want you to know that there's reason for us to believe that the signs that God has given us here through Jesus' words to us are going to be in greater abundance in these days than they've ever been in all the times in which we've lived before. So I've heard people say, boy, I would like to have lived when Jesus was on the earth and seen the signs that he did. Well, Jesus said, these signs and greater signs, these works and greater works, will you do because I go to my Father? And then I've heard other people say, oh, I'd like to have lived when the apostles were on the earth because they did all these signs. But Jesus said, and I'm going to read this now, these signs will accompany those who believe. Some people break this in a different place. Some people break it like this and say that some, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. But it doesn't make any difference because the intent is the same. In my name they will cast out demons. In other words, there's going to be supernatural power over the devil. Amen? Now, some of you probably haven't gotten into this too deeply yet, but I encourage you to really get into it and find out because there's something about allowing the anointing to completely take us over when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says they will speak in new tongues. They will speak in other tongues. Oh, I know there are many in religious circles teaching against it, but Jesus never taught against it. The Holy Spirit never taught against it. He says, forbid not to speak in tongues. Amen. Desire to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues. We find that in 1 Corinthians 14. We desire to prophesy. We desire to speak in tongues. Amen. 
He said, they will pick up serpents. There again, the serpent is a sign of, uh, of the devil. But, you know, I want to tell you very honestly, if you're, if you're in a situation and a circumstance where there are wild beasts, dangerous beasts around, I believe this scripture begins to apply for us. They'll pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. I heard the Lord say this morning, that is supernatural immunity. Will you say that with me? Supernatural immunity. <laughs> That's what I have. Do you have that too? It says if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And then finally it says, they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. This was the purpose that God put upon all of us, the anointing that he put upon us, that we would be his mighty servants in these last days, that we would speak his word, amen, say what he says, that we would speak his, his teachings and instruction to the people on the earth, that we will tell people round about us. We start with our own families, teaching your children. But then we teach everyone we come in contact with. We show them, show them the truth. Show them who we are in Jesus Christ. I'm glad I have supernatural immunity today, aren't you? I'm glad that I have supernatural immunity. Deadly poison, that, you know, you can think about what could that be. Well, it could be something that that uh, is a substance. It could also be microbes. It could also be viruses. Say, I have supernatural immunity. If there's any deadly thing that tries to enter into my body, it won't hurt me. Amen? Hallelujah. But I've got God's Spirit working in me. God's Spirit, His anointing, and the works that Jesus did, I'm going to do also so I can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Praise God. If there's anything been lost in all of this social distancing, this is certainly a part of it that we need to figure out. I think the Lord showed me something today about this social distancing and ministering to the sick. And by the way, I want to say it again today. As you hear the word of God, let me say to you right now, if you have sickness and disease attaching attacking your body right now, if it's attached itself to you already, let me say to you in Jesus' name, you be healed. Be well and be whole in Jesus' name. I'm speaking to you the way I believe Jesus spoke to people. I don't believe Jesus ever, well, I, according to Scripture, He never stopped and said, Oh, Lord, if it be your will, let them be healed. He always told them by the authority that God had given Him. And that same authority is given to us. The works that I do shall you do also. Say victory. Praise God we have the victory because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to take you to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Daniel was looking ahead to this time in which we live. And he said at that time shall arise Michael. Michael the archangel, the great prince who has charge of your people. Apparently, he has a special charge over Daniel's people, which were the people of Israel. But it says, Michael's going to arise, and there shall be a time of trouble. Well, we don't know exactly when it begins, but we know that we're getting into a time of trouble right now. But the Bible says there's going to be a time of trouble such as never has been. Jesus said, except the days be shortened in this time of trouble, no flesh would be saved. But here it says, it's never been that much trouble before since there was a nation till that time. But at that time, your people, say your people. I don't know about you, but I don't have any problem at all telling you that I'm included in this group. You say, yeah, but you may not be a Jew. Well, maybe I'm not. You don't know, I don't know. I may not be of, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, genealogy of Israelis, but I'll tell you what I have. I have the blood of Jesus inside of me, and I know that I'm one of his people. And I hope that I can get you to see that today, that you're one of his people. At that time, your people shall be delivered. When? In this time of great trouble that's coming. 
And then it goes ahead and it even verifies further what I said because it says everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. I was thinking about an old song we used to sing. It says there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. When I came home, when I made Jesus the Lord of my life, when I believed on Him, confessed Him with my lips, and believed Him in my heart, my name was written down in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. My name's there, praise God. So this applies to me. Daniel 12, 1 applies to me. And the great archangel, the great prince, has charge over me today. And in this time of trouble, I'm going to be delivered. Are you with me? This is time to get with me on this. I'm, I'm his people. You're his people. We're, we're his very own children. Did you know the Bible tells us that those who were not a people are now a people, and it's talking about us, and that's because of that very thing. Gentiles have become the people of the living God, too. Because they believe. And so we're now part of that nation of Israel. We're grafted in to the fig tree, the olive tree. We're grafted in to God's fruitful tree, amen, to his fruitful nation. Everyone whose name is written in the book. My name's written in the book, praise God. If you aren't sure your name's written in the book, just stop right now and say, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that I am yours and you are mine. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. I believe in my heart that God hath raised him from the dead, and I am saved. Do not be ashamed to open your mouth and say this. I've said this so many times, and I believe it every time I say it. Jesus is my Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I am a saved person, praise God. I'm delivered. That's what delivered means, saved, praise God. My name is found written in the book. Verse 2 says, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. We need to understand that those that do not take what God has given to them through the gift of Jesus Christ, some are going to Be resurrected all right, but they'll be resurrected to shame and everlasting contempt. Or the Bible in some places calls it perdition. They'll go into perdition with the beast and the false prophet. They'll be sent away with with the beast, with the devil himself and all of his angels, with all that followed him. But those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake and some to life, that's us, Say, that's me, I'll awake to life, but, praise God, we will not all sleep. Some of us will be alive when Jesus comes back to this earth and will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Verse 3 says, and those who are wise. I don't know about anybody that doesn't really like the idea of being wise. I'm not talking about being a wise guy, too many people are doing that now. But I'm talking about being wise, and the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Do you see what it's saying here? It's saying we're going to shine. The wise shall shine. I believe there's something about us that makes us stand out. I believe that that anointing that God has put in us will make us stand out and shine like the brightness of the sky above. But then it goes on and it says, those who turn many to righteousness. Oh, what a, what a wonderful ministry, turning other people to the truth. Having people hear the words that we say. Having people watch the brightness of our life and say, you know, that's worth following. I want to I wanna be like that. They've got something going on in their life that's right and it's good. I want to follow that. Amen? That's where we belong is in that place. Amen? Amen. While we're turning many people to righteousness, how's that going to happen? Well, I believe you can go back to Mark 16 there when it talks about those people who are filled with the Holy Spirit at that time. Those people who have been filled with God's Spirit. 
will have signs accompanying them. And that, that's part of our shining in this earth. There's going to be things that are going to shine. Supernatural things about us are going to show forth. People are going to see it. God's poured out His Spirit upon us. Amen. And we're going to speak in new tongues. Amen. We're going to, we're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They'll see us and they'll say, well, there's no chance for them. And then the Lord's going to deliver us and they'll see us shining in this earth. They'll say, there's no way that people can get out of the trouble they're in. And yet God's going to deliver us. Amen. Are you ready for that? Praise God. I'm ready for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to Isaiah 35 and look here at this one. Just while you're turning, I want to read a song uh, that uh, we used to sing. And uh, you, you turn to this uh, and look at it, but it says, And the Lord shall clause. In fact, this song is written, a lot of it, from uh, Isaiah 35. It says, The Lord shall cause His glorious voice to be heard, and you shall have a song in the night. Come to the mountain of the Lord, see His glory and His might. He's the mighty one of Israel, the mighty one of Israel. His voice shall be heard in the power of His word, the mighty one of Israel. Get this verse. The eyes of the blind shall be opened and they'll see. The ears of the deaf shall hear. The lame man shall jump and shall leap as a heart. The tongue of the dumb shall sing. The Lord shall cause His glorious beauty to be seen. The desert shall bloom and rejoice. Say to them that are fearful of heart, be strong. And listen to his voice. Amen. I like that song. That song speaks to me because it comes right out of Scripture. It comes out of Scripture. You'll see it as we go on here through this verse. What, what's this person that's, that's uh, had the, the voice of the Lord heard in them going to do? We're going to go around strengthening weak hands. Say it. Strengthen the weak hands. Make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Praise God. That's the words going out of our mouths, the words of God himself going forth from us to the people. Say unto them that have an anxious heart. Many people around you today have an anxious heart. I was seeing a news article the other day that said that there's more problems with, with people nowadays with, with uh, psychological problems. People are having more uh, emotional problems right at this time. Interestingly enough, they said people of our, of our age group are more firm in the way that we're standing. We're, we're weathering it well, but people that are younger, a lot of them have an anxious heart right now. Let's say to him, be strong and fear not. Your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, and he will come and save you. Then it goes on, and this is right out of Isaiah 35, 5. You'll recognize it as being part of that song. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Amen, I believe it. I believe we're going to see blind eyes opened in this day. Amen. I believe we've seen a latter rain outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and I believe there's a time come now. I mean, the the former rain and the latter rain, we've seen the former rain at the time of the original outpouring of the Spirit of God, and the latter rain is coming, but the Bible says they're going to happen in close proximity, the latter and the former together. Amen. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. Did Jesus open blind eyes? Oh, yes, he did. Did he open deaf ears? Oh, yes, he did. Is that work one of the works of Jesus? And did he say, the works that I do shall you do also? The eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the desert, in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to start seeing the manifestations of the Spirit in these latter days? You say, why does it talk about healing so much? Because there's so much sickness around us. There's so much sickness. 
But you know, I want you to notice it's talking about emotional strength there too. It's talking about emotional uh, coming together and understanding, be strong, fear not, behold, your God will come with vengeance. He will come and save you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I've just been told it's time for me to move on. Only a few minutes left. So we're going to go on to Isaiah 60 in verse 1. And again, I encourage you to go through these scriptures and read them and, and pour over them and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. If you pray in the Spirit right now, pray in the Spirit before you do it and let the Holy Spirit start opening things up to you. If you don't pray in the Spirit yet, let me just say this to you right now in Jesus' name. You seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be ye filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be ye being filled from this day on. Just let the, the washing of the water of the word and the spirit of the Lord just take those words and bring them forth from you with the anointing. Amen. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Say glory. Do you know what the glory is? It's God's manifested presence. Where is it? It's risen upon you. You know, I think a lot of people right now spend a lot of time watching people on TV. And what I hear them talking about is, oh, these are terrible times, people. No, this is really it. I mean, we've really come to the, we've really come to the bad, bad, bad time. And I watch their faces and they don't have joy about them when they do it. And I want you to know something. I'm excited. I'm joyful. You say, well, you know, do you like bad times? Certainly not. Do you like trouble? Certainly not. I don't enjoy trouble at all, but I know that the trouble came to pass. Amen. I know that that's not the end of things. I know that my God working on the inside of me is going to bring forth victory, and I know the same thing is going to happen. Many, many, many people of the Lord are going to arise and become strong in the Lord. They're going to become strong in the Lord. This word is calling you to do that. Arise and shine, for your light has come. You remember it said earlier that we were going to shine as the stars, as the firmament. We're going to shine, and the glory of the Lord's on us. Arise. You have to arise. You have to decide. You don't, you don't arise out of your chair without choosing to do it. You don't arise out of where you are right now and go higher without making a choice. Say, I'm choosing right now to arise. I'm going to go higher with the Lord. I'm going to go closer with the Lord. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Now here it is. It's telling you, don't, don't think there's something strange that darkness is going to cover the earth. And thick darkness, the people... But you remember I told you right at the beginning, there's two sides to the glory cloud. When the children of Israel were in the desert, and they were waiting right beside the banks of the, of the sea, and the armies of Israel had come up behind them, there was a cloud, that same cloud that led them all through their, their time in the wilderness. That cloud moved behind them to a place where it stood between them and the armies of Egypt. The children of Israel had their back to the sea. Between them was the cloud, and beyond that was the armies and chariots of Pharaoh. But remember, on the side of Israel there was light. Say light. But the Bible says on the side of the Egyptians there was thick darkness. Thick darkness. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. And thick darkness, you could say worldly peoples, the people that don't know their God. But the Lord will arise upon you, and His glory will be seen upon you. Say it'll be seen. His glory is going to be seen upon me. Say that. His glory will be seen upon me. And nations, <laughs> listen now, you're going to have, you're going to have an international you're going to have an international ministry in these last days. I believe that. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, but they're coming to you now. 
your sons shall come from afar. You say, well, I don't have any sons, or I only have one son, or I only have daughters. No, it's talking about different kinds of children coming to you right now. It's talking about spiritual children coming to you right now. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Do you see the picture of it? Oh, the family gathering, hallelujah. People coming to Jesus, coming from afar, people coming from the north, south, east, and west. Amen. It's that days that we're talking about, the day of the final outpouring of the Spirit of God. Eyes are going to be opened, ears are going to hear, lame are going to walk, deaf are going to, or the mute are going to speak. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then you shall see and be radiant. Oh, I love this. Then you shall see the glory of the Lord. When Moses came down off the mountain after he had been in the glory, what did he do? His face was shining. He, they, put a, they put a cover over it so, so the people wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, dismayed by the brightness. It says, you shall see and be radiant. I don't believe there's going to be any, any covering anymore. I believe we're going to let it shine. Arise and shine, your lights come. You shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. I was talking about the people that keep telling you all things are bad, you better store up food and hide in the mountains. Did Jesus say that? Did he say then in those last days you'll see things happening and, and you better just go hide someplace? Well, I know there's a place in Revelation that talks about the woman being carried into the wilderness and kept for a time, times and a half a time. I understand that and know that. But I want you to know that if you're supposed to go, you'll be carried into the wilderness. Amen. You don't have to run and hide. Amen. The Lord has a place of protection for you and a place of safety for you. But let Him do it. Amen. Don't you let fear guide you. Don't you let fear take you aside. No. Things are going to happen that wealth is even going to come to you. It says the wealth of the nation shall come to you. There are people saying store up things. You better store things up. I read all the time some of the, uh, some of the end times uh, doom and gloom prognosticators are telling us we better buy silver and we better buy gold. Nothing wrong with doing either one of those things. You can buy some silver and some gold. But I'd rather be led by the Spirit of God. Remember this, when Joseph was told to store food... It came from the Spirit of God. It didn't come from some televangelist trying to sell. It didn't come from somebody trying to tell them how they could protect themselves in these last days. I want you to know if you had all the, the wealth stored up that you could have, it's where moth and rust can corrupt it. Where it can actually be taken away from you. It can be stolen. But when the wealth of the nations come to you because the Spirit of the God of God has brought that upon you, I want you to know there's nothing can take it from you. Nothing can take it from you when you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. There's a mighty day coming, people. A mighty day coming. And in closing today, I want you to remember what the Bible has said in Habakkuk 2.14. He says, The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. That doesn't mean every man on this earth is going to receive it, but it means it's going to be available, amen. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to be available. You want to know why? Because we rise and shine, because our light has come, because the word of God is going forth unimpeded in these days. It doesn't make any difference who hates you. It doesn't make any difference who wants you to be quiet. The, whole, the anointing of the Lord is upon you. And he sent you to proclaim. He sent you to proclaim. He sent you to be victorious. Say, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus who loves me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and honor today. Let your light arise upon us, Lord. We choose to arise in your light, to arise in your glory, to rise in victory at this time. To not be fearful. To not be timid. No, God hasn't given us a spirit of timidity. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But of power and of love. And of a sound mind. And we thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.